So good morning. Um, I think we'll go ahead and get going. Uh, first off, welcome everyone to today's Think Data Thursday. Um, my name is Patrick Vanderheide, and uh, I work in the support organization um, and uh, help manage the community forums from the from the support side of the house. Um, we have uh, Tracy Rogers, formerly Fitzgerald, um, on here as well as a panelist from Tableau, and she's uh, in the marketing organization and helps to, to manage community forums from the marketing team. And uh, today's presentation is entitled Mapbox Powered Geospatial Love. And let me share our panelists here. So uh, our panelists today uh, are Chris Timmy. I'll cut from the, the reverse order of the pictures here. Chris Timmy. Uh, Chris Timmy is an information management and analytics consultant at Solemn Consulting. Chris Timmy. Uh, uh, is based here in Seattle. He works on data visualization projects for his clients of all sizes. In addition to his client work, Chris is an instructor at the University of Washington, Go Huskies, where he's taught uh, data visualizations using Tableau and ad hoc analysis and analytic methods. Prior to joining Solemn, Chris was a scientist at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, where he specialized in international security, nuclear safeguards, and nuclear energy markets. He holds a bachelor's degree in international studies from the University of Washington and a master's degree in global politics from the London School of Economics. Uh, next up, we have Alan Walker, uh, who I'm thrilled to, to have on here for the first time for a TDD, uh, at least with me. And Alan is also a consultant at Slalom. Um, his remit is to provide Slalom's clients with the best in the world's Tableau-based integrated solutions, meeting or exceeding their requirements. His aim is to provide the right information to the right people at the right time. His mission is to integrate geospatial and business intelligence and to enable full sensory data exploration. And uh, last but not least, we have Anya Ahern. Anya is the owner of Datablick. Uh, she's worked over 20 years in analytics, business intelligence, and data visualization. Her client projects have focused on analysis for financial services, information security, mobile and web applications, uh, social media monitoring, airlines, and customer segmentation and targeting. Blending her background in economics and product design, she enjoys using Tableau to blur the lines between data visualization, infographics, and art. She's been a Tableau user for the last seven years and was the 2012 Iron Viz champion. Many of you may have seen she was one of the judges at this year's Iron Viz as well. Uh, she enjoys using her Zen Master superpowers to support data and women and doing good with data via the Tableau Foundation, uh, which we'll uh, have a little bit more information about here later. Uh, you can read more about Anya and see examples of her work uh, at Datablick, uh, or let's see, work of the amazing Datablick team at uh, www.datablick.com. And without further ado, I'm going to switch over to uh, Anya and Alan together. Um, so here we go. Anya, I'm sticking you to present. There you go. Can we hear you? Do you want to just share my screen? Yep. Or? yep, we can hear you in just a second. I'm making you the presenter. Okay. Share my desktop. Tell me when you can see it. All right. We thought we'd uh, force everyone to dance just to get the energy level, uh, level up a little bit. So wherever you are, get up off your seat and uh, come and do a little nap dance with us. And I want to it up one time. <laughs> 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
into our presentation about how to make geospatial love in Tableau using Mapbox. Um, and Mapbox has generously uh, provided a coupon code in case you wanted to download Mapbox and play with it. The coupon code is listed right here. Um, it's good for two free months of uh, Mapboxing away, so it's a good way to get started and up and running if you just want to see if Mapbox is right for you. All right, everyone write it down, hopefully you got it. Uh, we can text it out too um, if you want. Um, what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about uh, what is Mapbox and uh, why should I use it in Tableau, different alternatives to using Mapbox. Um, we're going to talk about some real world examples of when we have used Mapbox in Tableau. And then we're going to launch into a couple of tutorials. We have one that just teaches you how to get up and running styling custom maps in Mapbox. And then in version 9.1 of Tableau and earlier, how you would go about getting those maps that you styled into Tableau. We're going to look at an example where we add custom uh, shape layers. And then we bring those into Tableau and how to how be able to toggle them on and off so you can have different layers um, in your map. And then we're going to talk about the new 9.2 Tableau integration and what it looks like there to add multiple layers into Tableau. Uh, and then we're going to talk about some uh, new features and capabilities in the new Mapbox Studio project and some of the things that we foresee or would like to see happen in the future with the new Mapbox Studio project. Um, so first I'm going to turn it over to Alan Walker and he's just going to talk about what is Mapbox. Yeah, sure. Um, so, Mapbox is um, a, a cloud um, mapping um, company that um, offer <laughs> the ability to style uh, your map um, using a um, minimal amount of code. Um, they offer excellent um, range of base maps to begin with. Um, these are so when I say base map, I mean a, a, a background map in, in, in Tableau. They also have um, some fantastic uh, APIs. So, for example, you can uh, work out the um, direction of um, where you're going from A to B. And they also have a really smart geocoder as well. Um, they, uh, they also uh, really concentrate on data layers as well. Um, if you go to mapbox.com uh, data uh, hyphen platform, you'll see that there, for, for us, it's you know, you just simply up, upload a, a data layer and, and style it on top of your map. Um, so fantastic um, for en enhancing your maps with, with extra layers. Um, the, um, it's just a really e nice, easy um, product to work with. Um, and and it has, it's a really good fit for Tableau. So we're 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 just absolutely delighted that the uh, two companies are are talking and creating a relationship and and building that uh, level of integration for for the for the future roadmap. And and we're having a huge amount of fun. Um, so, yeah, but building really cool stuff um, with both. So. Um, with that said, um, if you're in, into real uh, development, they have uh, really everything is more or less JavaScript based, so you can build a JavaScript um, Tableau application using the API, and then you can start building stuff on top of um, Mapbox as well, really quickly, really easy, and um, apart from that, it just offers a, a, a further uh, dimension to, to your visualization and it makes it look really good really quickly um, and uh, yeah that's that's kind of 
what Matt Fox is and, and what they're bringing to the, the travel table. Great. Thank you, Alan. Great. Uh, so we're going to launch into, oh, sorry, getting ahead of myself. Um, you know, we all love maps and Tableau. I call it the click, click, boom, right? You click on zip code, click on sale, click on show me, and you've got your, you know, fabulously styled geospatial representation of your sales data and executives do an off. Everyone loves the map. Everybody loves the map. Everybody loves the map. And Tableau comes with these beautiful styles that were designed by Seaman. There's the light, there's the dark, and the normal, which I don't think anyone ever uses. Totally. <laughs> um, Alan really likes the dark. He makes everything black. Um, so these are really great, but sometimes you want a little bit more customization. You want a map um, that maybe uh, focuses on different geographic features to be able to highlight a story about different geographies. You want to add custom shape files. You might have uh, custom sales territories or things like that that you want to be able to, to designate. Um, and also in Tableau, you're really limited to just kind of two mapping layers with the dual access, right? You can have a shape file and then maybe a circle on top. But sometimes you want multiple layers. You want a ton of layers. And so with yeah. Mapbox, it gives you the ability to add you know, an unlimited amount of layers in the background that you can toggle on and off yeah. in addition to your two map layers in the foreground. Yeah. So they work really well together. Um, some alternatives to it. Um, sometimes um, you might not be able to use Mapbox potentially for security reasons um, or your company just has its own geospatial team. So here's an example I did a long time ago before I discovered and fell in love with Mapbox. I uh, built my own uh, web server with mapping on there, and uh, it took me like three months to get something that kind of looked like a hand-drawn piece of <laughs> which I wanted it to. It was supposed to be very hokey and cartoony. Um, but so there are alternatives in that box. Is, for me, at least, it was a million times easier to get up and running and going. Yeah. So um, now we're going to talk about some examples that uh, we did using work for the Tableau Foundation. I'm just going to pop that on my keynote there. Um, and here's an example that we did. Oh, look, there's a think data Thursday now. I think I'll use that. Um, here's an example that we did on uh, looking at uh, where Ebola was uh, having outbreaks, and we wanted to be able to see where there was cell phone coverage. They wanted to be able to see where there were medical facilities, where there were um, where people could communicate via a cell phone so they could get help, where medical facilities were, and where the population was. Um, so here's an example where Alan created a view shed analysis of cell phone towers. I'm um, so looking at the custom map layer. We can toggle on and off where the incidents are, where the facilities are. Um, and we have this custom map layer that we built then in order to be able to see where the cell phone coverage was. Yeah, there's any other comments, Alan, on that? No, it's, uh, again, it was a uh, great, great blood work at the time. Uh, it was really into map box, kind of showed, showed us the way forward. Um, he, he, um, he he was, you know, helped upload this data uh, for the project, and um, at, at the time I was really into Esri and uh, and uh, Mapbox was was kind of I wouldn't say immature at the time, but it was certainly maturing. Um, so it, it was great to see, you know. Just how uh, easy it was to to get this huge data set uploaded and, and styled quickly. Great, thanks, Alan. And now we're going to turn it over to Chris Toomey, who's been very silent until now. I think you just embarrassed him. So, Patrick, if you could switch over to Chris, and he can uh, talk about the work he did for the Tableau Foundation and the World Health mm -hmm. Organization. Sure. Chris, sure. you should you should have it. There you go. All right, I got it. Thanks. Um, so one of the things that we had had worked on uh, before the Tableau Foundation, I'll share my screen in a second. Um, is the where did it go? Sorry about that. We were asked by the Tableau Foundation, actually Alan was asked by the Tableau Foundation to build a new set of maps for their disputed borders, um, which is a rather important thing when you're trying to, you know, deploy vaccines and 
things like that. And so one of the things they you know they they had issue with is that while well, the Tableau maps themselves do actually show some d disputed areas, uh, particularly over here in Kashmir, um, they're not exactly what the World Health Organization has to have in terms of legal information. So uh, you know they they're a large organization, part of the international uh, part of the UN. Um, so they asked us. They gave us a set of shapes, and um, we built this initial map, um, which is just a very clean and easy to use one, meant to be you know, you know very uh, you know uncontroversial and, and pretty clean. And then we also wanted to add some information, you know, pro, you know, plot that same information with satellite imagery. And so this is one of the other major benefits of Mapbox is that not only do you get the styling and the data, but they do an excellent job of collecting and processing satellite information so that is it is not only you know reflective of, of the world you know almost anywhere, but if we zoom out to look at the world, you'll notice that there are no clouds, um, which is uh, a feat in and of itself. So you know, being able to deploy this information to the World Health Organization so that they can see, you know, their product, their their activities and the programs that they're supporting in the world at any given point in time is something they've never been able to do and never been able to share through their own website. Um, so, hope we're we're nearing completion of this project, and hopefully, you'll be we'll be able to make these these maps available to individuals outside of the World Health Organization, um, but. You know, they had a very specific need driven by legal requirements, and so uh, this is what we built for them, and hopefully we'll be able to share it with everybody soon. So I'll pass it, pass it back now, um, and Anya can, and Alan can get back to their, their, their map box excitement. Okay, on you. Should you get have it now? Uh, it's a wonderful example of the power of Mapbox um, and how it can be used in Tableau. Um, some other reasons that you might want to use Mapbox, and this is far sillier, is just you know you want to create a custom style because of something that you're doing. Um, so here is an example we did um, for the Tableau conference, which is just the uh, all the flights. Ah, sorry, all the flights. Woo! The full screen that killed me. Um, all the people coming into Vegas, all the different flights, and we just wanted it to look like a crazy, you know, all-out air raid. So you can also use Mapbox just to because you want a specific style that matches the needs of your bed. <laughs> um, so now, who wants to get started? Is everyone like super excited to launch into how to learn to use Mapbox? We're going to do some styling examples. Here's an example that I was super excited. Stephen made it into the keynote. And here's a map I created um, that is supposed to look like my San Francisco Giants. Yay! Let's go Giants! <laughs> um, so but we're going to do a different one today. Um, so if you haven't already and you want to click along, um, you would need to go to Mapbox and download the classic product. Now I want to uh, just point out this pitfall because I have a lot of people on my blog writing and they, they go to Mapbox and they download or they start playing with the new Mapbox Studio. Um, that doesn't work yet, fingers crossed in Tableau. Um, so you need to make sure that for now, if you're in 9.1 or in 9.2, you need to be using the Mapbox Classic product, not the Mapbox Studio. And it'll ask you to download an app. And once you get started, you should be able to create new styles. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new style or store. And notice they have all these fabulous styles that are already made. And if you're getting started, they're just, there's a great way to get started. There's a lot of information and different um, layers, like roads and waters and waterway and airports. And so you can use that as a, as a starting point to create your customized map. I'm going to go ahead and start off with the basic style. Okay, and you can see it's, it's pretty basic, um, but it won't be for long. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm really into my Golden State Warriors right now, right? <laughs> go Warriors! So we're going to go ahead and maybe make a little map to customize and show our love for them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the land to kind of that Warriors gold color. And if you ever need to uh, 
find some team colors. There's a website out there, and you can go in and you can search for your favorite team, and it gives you the hex code for the colors that you want. Um, so that's where I got the ones for the Giants, too. So I'm going to go ahead and just change the color value. Very easy. Everything that is using uh, land or references the, the color land is going to be changed to the Warriors goal, which is SDB927, for those of you clicking along. And real quickly, I'm going to hit the Save button, and it's going to ask me where I want to save all the files uh, with for my Warriors map. I'm going to go ahead and call it Go Warriors. <laughs> okay, and hit Save. And all of a sudden, wow, look at that. All of my land has changed to Warrior Gold, which is very cool. Um, let's go ahead and change our water really quickly to blue. I'm just going to type in 006. Oh, excuse me, 6. BB 6. And hit Save again. And right away, with just two changes. I just typed in two hex codes. All of a sudden, we have a fabulous Gold State Warrior. <laughs> And if anybody, uh, anybody from the UK is watching this, that almost looks like the very old school 1980s BBC News backdrop as well. <laughs> um, very cool. Uh, you can also do other things like change the font. Um, so right now in here, it's, it's referencing fonts, and it's just looking at Sam's Pro Regular. Um, I, I think I want to use a different font. I'm going to go ahead and look at the fonts that they have loaded. You can actually add your own custom fonts if you wanted to. So in lots of cases, um, you know, you might have a corporate font to go ahead and once you load it in, it would be made available for you. I found one that I think is pretty close to what I want. Um, it's this Clan on Office Pro. I'm just going to go ahead. Or no, it was Office Pro. And I'm just going to go ahead and you can copy the name of the font. And you can just paste it in here. And I'm going to go and use the italic one and replace that here. You can also have multiple fonts. If you need a fallback font, you could add those as well. And the last one, I'm just going to add my bold. And hit save again. And all of a sudden, my font updates to be kind of more of a, but even in, even in Egypt, they're where you're stand. Awesome. The whole one. <laughs> I love it. Um, all right, so we can go ahead and uh, so that's really easy. Again, all I've done, I've changed two colors and I've changed out one font. Um, super easy to customize. Uh, we can do some other things for the text if you wanted to. Um, you notice in here it's called Cardo CSS. So if you're familiar with any web styling, it's really very similar. If you ever want to think of things that you can do to the text, so for instance, right here I have my city labels. Um, I have the text face name, and I have the text fill color. So let's go ahead and change the text color again to that blue. I love my warrior's blue. Now I want to see what else I can do. And Mapbox has this wonderful this online uh, reference guide. If I click on Doc, I can go in and I can see all the different things that I can do to customize my CSS. And I'm interested in playing with my text right now, so I'm going to scroll down and see all the things I can do with my text. I can change the size. Um, I can adjust the spacing. I can do all kinds of things. What I want to do, though, I want to add a halo around my text. I want to make it easier to read, so maybe add some white around it to pop it out. And so really easy, you can just copy and paste. Ah, excuse me. So much of me, and you're nervous, and you're having a hard time typing. Uh, you can copy really easily and paste, and you could add a halo. Oh, oh my. Okay, and then we can specify how big we want that halo to be by picking a text halo radius. So again, anytime you're like, ooh, how do I make this marker or this shape do something, if you come into these docs, you can almost 99% of the time just copy and paste the code and change it to meet your needs. And always remember to add a semicolon after everything because I never do. Um, <laughs> I'll do it a radius of one. And go ahead and save. And then if we go into, let's go over to uh, San Francisco, I guess we should go to Oakland. Oakland, California. You'll see now our labels have this beautiful blue, and they have a little one pixel border around them. Right? So once you're done, you want to go ahead and uh, upload your style to Mapbox. 
and it just takes a minute. And you want to make sure that you have your uh, map ID. So just copy and paste that, put that in a text file somewhere. And now that we have this beautiful style, we're going to learn how to get it into Tableau. And this is for versions 9.1 and prior. And 9.2 is no longer necessary. But for now, we're going to walk you how to do it. Um, so here's an example. And I'm using the uh, cooking show pre-baked kind of version of things where I've already done it. Um, what you would need to do, there's plenty of examples of CMSs out on my website that you can download. Um, you would need two pieces of information. One is that map ID that I just told you to save. You would go um, into whatever text editor tool that you want to use. I'm using Sublime Text. And you would want to swap out the, the code for the map ID with the code that you just created, with the one that you just uploaded to Mapbox. And so to do that, I usually just use the find and replace. It's in about three places, so you just want to make sure you get them all by using find and replace. The other thing you would need to update is when you log into Mapbox and you create an account, you get an access token. So you would need to copy and paste that token right here with your access token. And then you also need to give your uh, map a name so that when you open it up in Tableau, you're able to see it and select on it. So in this case, I changed my name to Warriors. Cool. And then I'm going to go, let's see, do I have this one already? Um, so here's an example of where I, I'm in Tableau. I have a map. I have saved that TMS file. Um, oh, I think I should show you where to save that. Once you have your CMS file and have saved it in your documents, there is a My Tableau Repository folder. If you open up your My Tableau Repository folder and you uh, save it into Mapbox, excuse me, you save it into the map sources, so here are all the different TMS files that I've created. Save them in here, then you need to shut down Tableau and restart it. And when you do, you'll be able to go in and from your map menu, pick background map. And here it lists all the different maps um, that you have added to that map source. And I'm, of course, going to go ahead and pick my warriors. Huh. And where'd it go? I don't see anything. Oh, no. Well, you need to make sure to go back into map and select map options. And you need to turn on the layers that you want to see. So in this case, we're going to turn on our warriors layer. And there we have it, our beautiful Warriors map in Tableau. Woo! Everyone excited? I hate that everyone muted it. Uh, yeah, it's just no feedback. We're really excited for a while. Woo! All right. Check the chat, Alan. They're probably going to muted. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, that's a very fun um, styling a, a layer in Mapbox Studio. Um, let's go back to my keynote. Um, so the next thing, okay, or just to summarize, the things that you need to change in order to create your TMS is just to add your own access key, swap out the map ID using find and replace, and if you want to, go ahead and change the, the name of the map so that when you see it in Pueblo, you know what it is. The last thing you can do is, if you're being really naughty, you can change the attribution string. So instead of seeing OpenStreetMap or whatever is down there, you would, you know, you could change it to your company name, or in my case, the data like that. Yay. All right, going on to our next tutorial. Um, what if we want to have multiple layers in that box, right? We want to see um, not just one layer. We want to have a couple of layers that we can toggle on and off. Um, Sorry. Oh, here we go. So here's an example that we did. Um, Alan and I presented at Twitter a while back, and we got some data on people who tweeted about love um, on Valentine's Day. And it was the most boring data on the planet. It was. <laughs> there was no story. We sat on the plane on the way back from Tapestry for like three hours trying to find anything decent and juicy about tweets about love it's, on Valentine's Day. It's, it's like a, a three-hour flight of like 15-minute island business trying to pull something out of Nothing. Yeah. Anyhow, so we decided to turn it into an application to help me find my true love using Twitter data. Um, so we built some custom maps. I wanted it to look like a Keith Haring painting, so I created a very nice base layer map style um, in Mapbox to look like a Keith Haring painting. And then these are just uh, shape files in the foreground in Tableau. 
um, showing how people were positive or negative or this guy was neutral. Um, and we wanted to be able to have different map views. So for instance, I'm really, really lazy and I wouldn't date anyone that didn't live on any line because I'd have to walk too far. So here we added a custom map box layer showing uni and all the different stops so I could see, well, that was way out here, but you know, so this guy, he's still, even though he's out kind of towards the marina, he's still on the uni line, so I could go ahead and uh, date him, although, I don't know, the tweet wasn't very exciting. Um, or another thing we could do is, you know, there are certain neighborhoods in San Francisco, I'm, just, I'm more into like guys from the mission, not into the marina, so I plotted out neighborhoods that I would not date in, and I actually <laughs> in the map box created a, a pattern fill, so instead of just a color fill, I told it with more keep herring paintings to just kind of show, um, block out the neighborhoods where I would not date in. So this guy, um, he actually seems really nice, right? He's at the uh, Cookie Fields at the beach with his daughter. Like, I, you know, I might change my mind even though he lives in an undesirable neighborhood. <laughs> um, so this is kind of the example, again, of being able to have multiple layers that you create a map box, and then you put them together in one TMS file, and then you can toggle them on and off depending on the analysis that you want to do. Yay! So let's go ahead and get started on that. Um, what we need to do first is we need to go and find some shape files. So in order to find things like um, a neighborhood file or the muni line, um, usually if you search online, there's a lot of free shape files out there. So in San Francisco, um, I go to the site SS Open Data, which is run by the San Francisco government, and there's tons, if you just search for shape file, you can see tons of different shape files that are out there. Um, this one is just an example of the uh, police district, which is going to be for a different example that I show, but you would just download that file. You can just click on it and download it. And then you go to Mapbox, um, classic, and you want to add the data. So you just go to your data, do, do, do. Um, and you can add a new data set. And you would, I love these little people, by the way, Mapbox. Is yeah, added okay, are they? Absolutely adorable. I want t-shirts. Hint, hint, if anyone from Mapbox is on, I want t-shirts and stickers from my kids with these guys on there. Um, so you can go ahead and look in your downloads, and here I have the um, SS Police Department, uh, the, the shape file that I had downloaded. And you can just go ahead and upload it, and it takes a while. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Yeah. It's so oh, do I have to first? No, isn't it fabulous? That's Here awesome. it's telling me it's processing. It takes a while, so I'm not, I mean, it doesn't take that long, but um, what we could then do is once you have the map ID for a specific shape file, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, bake or break or cooking show, pretend that I already uploaded it, you would create a new layer. You would go to your styles and sources and take a new source. And after you uploaded the data, it would give you an ID key. You would just paste the ID key of the data that you just loaded in here and create. And all of a sudden, you would have this beautiful file there for you to be able to style. Um, there's very little in the shape file, but again, I can change the line width, the color. If I wanted to, um, I could add a polygon fill. So if I hit save, I could fill it in. I could, um, here, it's showing to fill it with this particular color. Uh, which is cyan, but make it pretty see-through, make it 20% yeah. um, adjust the opacity. Yeah. Um, so you can do all kinds of things like this. Once you're done with styling your, your layer that you wanted to add, you would again just go um, and you would, oh, sorry, you would just save it to Mapbox and again copy down that map ID key. Okay, so the process again is go out and find a shape file yeah. or if you're really crafty and you have RPML. Yeah, yeah, RPML, yeah. yeah. Um, or I use a lot of uh, QGIS in order to, to, to find shape work. files mm -hmm. and play with them first. So you get your, your shape files, you upload them to Mapbox, style them the way that you want, upload that style into Mapbox, copy that map ID because you're going to need it in a minute. Here's a, a really good uh, little tip mm -hmm. is also when you're doing the like polygons like this mm -hmm. is to do the centroids and uh, QGIFs mm -hmm. so that they work out perfectly for the labeling. Yeah, if you wanted to add a label, you would want to place it perfectly in the center. Yeah. You, in QGIFs, which is a free kind of version of ArcGIS, you can have it calculate the center and you can add a point and then you can have a label to that point yeah. or a marker to that point. Great point. 
All right, so once we have a couple layers, we want to assemble them in our CMS file. And so that looks a little bit different, um, but not too different from when we just had one layer. So um, we have, sorry. So right in here, um, the step number one, again, is just to make sure you have your correct access token. Um, you would go ahead and create a display, a, a label for each of the different layers that you wanted to show. So the key was my key pairing uh, base map, and then I have the hood, which was neighborhood shape files, and then I have the muni shape files. Um, and again, you would go ahead and swap out your map ID in each of those areas to match the map ID that you had just created. Again, very easy. And once you're in Tableau, again, we saw what that looked like in the, in the tweets of love, where you could just toggle them on and off. Um, if I go to that sheet, here I have my key pairing uh, map loaded against a background map. So I'm using my keys with hood and muni. And in my map options, um, I can just go ahead and toggle on and off the different layers. So depending on here, if I have, oh, yeah, it was muni one, sorry, muni. I can go ahead and toggle on and off my different layers in Tableau. So it's very fun. So again, it's, you know, you can have multiple layers at the same time. So in theory, you could go ahead and you could have both the Muni and the Hood. Or you could have just the Muni without anything else. So you can mix and match all the different layers in any way that you want to. So it's really fun um, to play with and very customizable. All right. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you, and thank goodness, I'm tired of talking. I'm going to break this up more. Um, it is the thing that we're all really, really, really excited about, so beyond excited, is the 9.2 Mapbox integration. Yay! So no longer do you have to play with that TMS file and do all that find and replace in text, but Tableau has made this so super easy peasy um, that anyone can do it. And so uh, here's an example we did, and this was uh, for our presentation on uh, JavaScript and user experience, but we kind of wanted to do a look for Skyfall, like the James Bond movie, have these very kind of futuristic space AG map. Um, and our use case for this was, well, we're fighting crime in San Francisco, and depending on the type of crime incident that's occurring, uh, we would be able to switch on and off map layers. So if it's a police you know, incident, we would be able to switch on where the police districts were. If it was fire, maybe we wanted to uh, switch on the fire district or escape routes out of the city, different things like that. Um, so now in uh, the new Tableau, you would go, nice, so you'd go up to Maps and Background Maps and then click on Map Services. And you would just add a new Map Service. I'm just going to click on Edit. Um, and you would give your style a name, and then you would just cut and paste each of your different layers into uh, the, the dialog box one at a time. And the order is important. The first one is going to be on the bottom, and the, the, the last one is going to be on top. So if you, if you have a base kind of map style, always make sure the bottom one's at the top. Um, you can also, if you didn't want to use um, the ones that you had created, because Mapbox is so fabulous, they have all these predefined, just amazing styles, so you can also take advantage of those in the new Mapbox 9.2. You don't have yeah. to um, recreate the wheel. Exactly. If you just want the satellite, uh, yeah. satellite map, click satellite, find where it is. Yeah. Um, and so what we did here is um, we have all those different layers, and we created a, what Alan called a box normal view swapper. So in order to be able to toggle on and off the layers in Tableau, uh, we create a parameter that just allows uh, the user to pick what layer that it is that they wanted to see. And it's just the name of the layer in this case. Um, and then we have a filter set up. And each of the, so right now there's actually like, if you notice in here, there's all these different sheets that are on the dashboard, even though you're only seeing one. They're all put together in a horizontal layout container with the title hidden. Um, and because we're going to filter. Yeah, so we're going to show you the filter right now. And so the filter matches the parameter. It's just we created a, a, a filter called map layers, put it in our filters window. And because this map is looking at um, police districts, these blue lines here, we just set the condition to be police district. OK. And so then when the user has it in Tableau, because once we publish it, um, 
we want the user and public to be able to pick from it, we can go ahead and just pick things like the lifeline. So here showing the escape route out of San Francisco. Um, we're in San Francisco, so we love to show fairies. <laughs> Bad joke. I live in the capture way too long with a bunch of dragons. Um, and police district. Right, so we can toggle on and off the different map layers. And again, that was so easy in the new 9.2. You just go up to your map menu. Um, safe, safe. Yeah, you just go to your map services, add a new uh, map box layer, um, and just copy and paste in all those IDs, and there you have it. And then, um, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and pass my laptop over to Alan. He's going to talk about, <laughs> well, what's actually going on What's in the background? Is there a TMS? What's the secret document even happen? Well, what I discovered was that this was uh, this is using the old uh, WMS interface for those that have uh, gone through um, that process before. What you can do is actually quickly export the um, the TMS to let's do the desktop. Yeah. And we can this one right here and then desktop and then what the Alan doesn't know how you do that. I'm a Windows guy, and then right, I can open this with a notepad or something. Oh my lord. She's a master of snakes. Alan Hawk can use my back. So, like, it's just a standard TMS file that, of course, we can we can play, and nobody wants about about maps on here, and so we can uh, we can put our uh, <laughs> geospatial love TDT like that, and we, we we can also do you know. Uh, I'm going to say, I, but you get the point, right? <laughs> well, the nice part about this is now you have a TMS file, and so you could like. <laughs> give it to someone else and they could reuse it. They would just put that in their um, the map sources and they'd be able to use it or you would be able to reuse it over and over again because they might have a workbook. So, yeah, or paste it up to the server. Yeah. So, cool. Um, yay, sharing TMS. All right, we will save that one. I think I'm done now. Yay. Oh, and now, everyone get ready. It's time for Chris Timmy to blow your mind. Yeah, yeah, check this out for goal. This is amazing. All right. Patrick, can you follow the back, Chris? Yep, that's great. And just, uh, I also uh, uh, shared the sheet selector uh, KB article on the uh, on the chat for anyone that's interested um, since, uh, since you were showing how to do uh, uh, the sheet selector trick with the dashboard, so. Yeah, uh, and if you go to the Datablick website, um, on the Datablick.com, there's a new blog post, and I actually outlined step-by-step step the 9.2 and how to do what I just did with the, uh, the Skyfall map. So there's a step-by-step step super easy blog post on 9.2 map box integration on Datablick.com. Great. Okay. Um, uh, some people also I wanted to just share. Some people had a hard time hearing a little bit uh, from you guys, and I'm. Uh, I'll just let everyone know that in the post processing of this video, I'll uh, increase the audio levels uh, a bit so that you guys can can come through. You're, you're quite clear. Just sounds a little bit distant, so I'll go ahead and fix that afterwards for the folks folks who are wondering. And uh, now Chris, Chris is unmuted and ready to go. Here you go, Chris. All right. All right. So a couple of things here. Uh, so what Anya and Alan showed you is the original version of Mapbox. So this is what, what they call classic. And on my on my screen now, this is when you when you see when you come into Mapbox, this is where you're landing. Um, so if you follow Kent Martin's wonderful instructions that he posted yesterday, I, it can be a little bit confusing. So well, everything you do um, in Mapbox with classic lives here over on the left hand side. Um, that was actually a feature request that we put in to make it easier for people to find their stuff. Uh, the other piece over here, your access token is here on the right. 
So uh, that's a little bit different than the way it used to be, but just wanted to get everyone level set. So um, we've covered everything you can do with Mapbox Studio Classic. But what you may not know is that Mapbox, at almost the exact same time as Tableau announced their integration, Mapbox debuted a new platform. This is the studio that Anya spoke about. Um, so I'm going to show it to you very quickly. And I'm going to show you a couple of things that we're thinking about doing with Tableau and actually with Visible. Um, and then uh, a couple of other interesting little surprises for you at the very end. So first, Studio is actually much more, from, much more akin to Tableau than you would actually do in, in Classic. So there is no code. Uh, you have just the exact same map preview. It's a little bit different technology. You can see it's a lot smoother. Um, but over here on the left, you can drag and drop your data layers. You can duplicate them. You can, here's all the data that just like Anya was using inside of the style. You can go back and you can edit it. Um, you can uh, profile all of your colors. So down here at the properties, you can do, it makes, makes life and design a whole lot easier. You, the, instead of taking a shape file that you have saved to your desktop and then you know, find, save, publish, whatever, you can just drag it here onto your, onto your screen and then Mapbox will process it and then make it available. So for example, you know, as you know, I'm uh, here in Seattle and I'm a, 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 Husky, a Husky alum, so I'm trying to map some information about the University of Washington. Um, so this is, a shape, so this is a shape file that I created in Alteryx and then I plotted the, the, the center point uh, for the labeling. Uh, which is an excellent thing to do. And then all I can have to do is say, well, I have a property name in there. I'm going to set a filter, hit go, and then I can style that data however I want. I can Then I can duplicate those layers just like you duplicate sheets, and that's great. So you have this extremely powerful and easy-to-use mapping platform. That's great. Um, so what can you do with it? So the first thing is that I, everybody who was at conference and saw the Premier Visible it was a beautiful technology. It brings you, you know, your data into your hands, but it was missing a map. We have bars and we have lines, and you know, Dave's story was talking about being able to interact and be close to your data. Well, I'm actually we want to bring that data home. So what we have here is an is a is a UI template. It's a little a little um, thing that looks like visible, and you notice that I added an icon. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on it and see what happens. So. This is a map built by Anya uh, in studio, and what we're plotting is every single Starbucks in the United States. So this is about, uh, I think this is probably 10 to 15,000 points published live on, in a browser, where previously you could maybe get 1,000 and you might be lucky. So you'll notice that we can zoom in, it's extremely smooth. The other cool thing we can do, we'll come in close to, and we'll click on this store right here. And it's going to give us information about it. Now, you'll notice that the map is snappy. Uh, it's extremely fluid. Um, it's also connected to my geolocation based on the properties that you know, the iPad has and your computers have. So that's a fantastic a way to actually bring your data home. Um, the other piece here is up here on the right, we can actually have some geocoding. Alan spoke about this earlier. So we're going to type in San Francisco and see what happens. And you'll notice that Mapbox and, and GL is going to take us to our data. Um, you can act just, just like you could do with the, uh, the lines, you know, the, the line world and the bar world, and the, I can't remember what they, what Dave calls it, but you can interact with your data however you like. Everything is fluid. You can ask it the questions that you want. And then over here is just a little concept for how we would be able to style dynamically based on the properties of our data. Now, in the background, this is processing. This can process any text, uh, CSV, or a spreadsheet, turn it into a file that Mapbox can read, and then plot it. And it's extremely quick. Uh, we also have a little thing here so you can just you know, pick, you can change your colors if you need to. Um, but again, we wanted to make it look and feel just like uh, the Tableau experience your, your, everyone is so used to, but in a way that's built on modern fluid technologies um, that look and feel fantastic. So that's the first concept. This is, again, this was just a little side project um, that, we, that we were working on. Now, 
the next piece, um, going back to what uh, Anya said, and that everything that is done in Mapbox has to, to for Tableau has to be done in Studio Classic. And we actually asked Kent and Sean um, if we could have GL inside of Tableau, and they said, no, it's a very heavy engineering effort, uh, which is true if we needed it to render in GL, but we don't. So uh, everyone on the call is going to be the first people in the world to see Mapbox GL styles inside of Tableau Desktop in 9.1 and in 9.2. So just to, so I'll I'll do the nothing up my sleeve. So here's my here's my studio uh, in you know the, the studio styles. Here are my classic styles. There's nothing here. So here's the map. We'll zoom in. It's plotting points at a certain level. It's going to plot shapes, and then at another level, it's going to plot zip codes with little football stadiums. Those are the stadiums of the. Uh, so these are fan zones and uh, stadium, the actual stadiums for that team. So again, this is the map. Now let's open 9-1, take a look. So we're going to plot, get a map going. We'll take these off. So we just have the, the background map. Background map. Oh, what's this? GL 9-1. Well, what do you know? There it is. The exact same map brought in just like tiles. Um, so your styles. In Retina, for, you know, every level of detail that you have is here. Um, works just the same. Now, what about 9.2? We know the process is a little bit different uh, because we can't just drop a TMS into our map sources and then say, well, oh, just read the map source. We have to actually go through an import. And Tableau has changed. If you saw, there was a quick flash earlier with when Alan and Anya were showing their TMSs. Um, they're slightly different. There's a little more detail in them. So what about 9.2? Well, I happen to have the beta here, just so you can see. Here's the beta. We're going to go up to map, background map, map services, just like we would normally. And we're going to import a TMS. Here's one right here, designed for 9.2. We're going to hit open, add a little notification so you know that this is what you're looking at. And we're just going to hit close. Uh, plot the map. What do you know? There it is. Your data, your map, retina quality with styles designed in studio. So it is possible. We're actually working with Mapbox now to make it available uh, to users. It's not quite ready yet, but this is we wanted to show you what's coming. Um, and with fingers crossed, maybe if Kent's on the line, maybe we can bake this in because it's pretty close uh, to what they do for the 9.1 integration or for the, the, the studio classic integration. But we didn't want you to feel like you were ever constrained by what you could do technologically. Um, so we wanted you to be able to use it the best and bring it into your Tableau environment. Um, uh, I'm actually working on a, a post with one of the Mapbox uh with Matt, Matt Irwin, who you may have met at, at the conference, to talk about this and show a, a little more detailed demo about what's going on in the background. And then regardless of what uh, Tableau decides to do with uh, uh, with the, the studio and the GL styles. We will be publishing a guide to thinking about studio uh, GL styles inside of Tableau because it's a little bit different. They have a nice set of tools to help avoid things like this. If you back out, you'll notice that some of the text has been cut off. That's due to just tile issues, but. Um, there are ways where you can get around that so you can design your map exactly how you want and bring it into Tableau. So um, that's what's coming. It's avail it will be available soon. Um, and hopefully we'll have some more interesting news for you regarding Mapbox uh, in the next week or so. So that's all I've got. Um, and if you want to begin to take some questions or do some Q&A, or I'll pass it back to Alan and Anya right now. Okay, I've gone ahead and uh, changed the presenter back to, there we go, changing it back uh, to Anya and Alan. And uh, Alan, I'll go ahead and unmute you. There you go. So Alan, you're unmuted as well. And there were a couple of questions. And uh, is there any more follow-up? No, Alan, did you have any more? No, we don't have a lot. But we're all good. <laughs> okay. Um, so we, you've, just, you've just seen a new map site for Visible. 
and you've also seen vector tiles and Mapbox being served up as Tableau tiles in 90 Beta. I, I think that's kind of a lot. It's quite a lot for, the, for a morning. Yeah, this has been great. Uh, I think we've had the questions answered as we've gone through. Let me just see if we have any other uh, left in there. There was a question, I, I think, uh, maybe then for Chris about the um, oops, there, uh, about GL working with 9.08. Uh, I think it's going to be 9.1, but Chris, can you confirm that? Well, actually, um, the, method, uh, the method we're using is, is uh, co completely compatible. So again, this is a this is a tile question. So if it works in 9.1, um, it should work in 9.08. So uh, it shouldn't be any uh, there shouldn't be any difference there. Great. And I. Um, I'm trying to get my uh, – when we switch back to this mode, the, the Q&A, uh, the, the way that the uh, modules work is slightly different, so I'm having a hard time actually seeing any of the questions, but I believe that they're all answered in there. Um, that was a, um, an amazing – go ahead. I, there's a couple in here. So there's one um, from Colin Anderson asking about the level of interactivity between Mapbox data and Tableau, and the, the short answer is that there isn't any. Uh, Tableau considers – maps to be images, so they are effectively just flat background images with a with a coordinate system on them, um, which means that anything, any data you embed in the Mapbox content itself cannot be cannot be used inside a Tableau desktop as a filter, as a you know, as some sort of interactive element. Um, unfortunately, you can um, if you decide to use the JavaScript API, you can get some information to go back and forth. So you can you can uh, one of the then you can query points that you plot, or you can actually use something called the Surface API to query data that's embedded in your tiles, and then pull that data out and go back and forth between Tableau and Mapbox. That's a little more advanced, but it is possible. We actually did it out here in Seattle, um, carving out a region from a base map. Um, you can. You have to just know the bit what in what part of the information you want to carve out. So you, uh, whether it's in Studio, you can set up a, a Boolean expression for column equal equals or does not equal a certain value, and that will can either gray it out or just not represent it. Um, and the same goes for any other attributes that you have in your shape file. Um, shading different layers of GL map uh, data, with data from Tableau, um, not via desktop, but yes, you could do it um, uh, within a JavaScript environment. There's a, there is a work in progress to get the styles to be more data-driven and dynamic. That's coming soon, uh, but if you wanted to like click on something and then uh, click on the West Coast and it changes the, the water color or something to um, something else, you can do kind of interactive styling. Uh, based on interactions with the map, so that is completely possible. Hey, hey Chris, uh, I do have a, a question. Um, trying to animate something on Mapbox uh, is kind of difficult. How's the um, if, if we if we uh, you know if we're looking for a truly dynamic map, how, how do you think that would be best achieved? To do a animated map in in Mapbox, um, I would recommend just I would start one starting with uh, with your with GL. I, I wouldn't start with the the standard base map or the standard JS platform. Um, animation is a pretty taxing process, so you want to get as much power as you can, and that GL is definitely the way to go. Um, there's a couple of really cool demos that can uh, animate data uh, based on um, uh, just the attributes, so you can just continue to plot them, plot points and plot lines over time. Uh, it can either be via an AJAX query or some sort of a, uh, a timer um, based on the user interactions. But uh, the, you should check out the courier demo um, that Mapbox has. It's actually, they're running about 15 yeah, awesome. different. Yeah. Um, let's see here. We have two more questions possible to display, carve out, only U.S. So you would have to set 
U.S. I think it's admin level zero e or country equals U.S. And there's an inspector. Uh, they call it X-ray. So you can inside of Mapbox Studio Classic, there is a button in the middle. It looks like a, 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 a magnifying glass. You can use that to um, look at the look at the underlying data. I can actually can if you put the screen of me, I can show it. I have a example. that'd be great. Yeah, the X-ray is pretty awesome. Uh, so can you pass, uh, uh, yeah, Alan's Alan's screen is shared. Or, or oh, you want me to share uh, share, oh, yeah. share, share yours? Uh, there you go, Anya. Yeah, so here's just an example of like each of the this is for upcoming vids we're doing with Christy Martini. <laughs> um, but we were looking at the different countries, and I needed each of the continent style um, in a different way. So let me, yeah. Um, yeah, so I just called out the, the attribute of continent, and if it was North America, I made it to the color. Huh? Uh, Anya, Anya, we don't see your screen. Oh, uh, sorry. There you go. So here's an example um, where I just, I, I needed each of the continents to be a different color. I was trying to make it look just like the movie War Games. <laughs> so um, it, you can just, there's the attribute of continent, and both the continent equals North America color at this, right? And you can also do it with values. So you could say if something is greater than this color at this, so you can do it like, Bin color ranges as well. But, but here's just an example of using attributes to create color. Yep. Uh, and, and, uh, another way is you could just load a, a shape file up um, on, a, on a blank background map. Yeah, that's what, yeah. This is a, so if you just want to do a United States, you, you just upload admin zero United States as a shape file, put it on a, a, a blank map, and then, yeah, and then just down. color the, the shape file, right? Yeah, this was a separate continent file that I downloaded. Yeah. Oh, so you can do it. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Anything else? Uh, hey. uh, no, I think that's all the questions. All the questions appear to be answered now, so that, that's great. Um, a, uh, a big round of applause. Uh, I'll unmute Chris, too. They're just say, Chris, thank you as well. And Anya and Alan, thank you for joining today. This has been a, a, an amazing uh, amazing Think Data Thursday. And um, as I said earlier, I will. Uh, th this, this Think Data Thursday is recorded, and uh, I have some processing work that I do afterwards, so it takes me a few hours to get that done. Uh, and then I'll get it back up onto the um, onto the, the community location, um, and uh, and then probably by tomorrow onto the YouTube location. So thank you, Patrick. Yeah, thank you, Bye. Bye.